everybody. It's um, August 17th, Thursday, and this is the Common Working Group for Chaos. I hope everybody's doing good. Um, quick reminder, this is under the Chaos Code of Conduct, as uh, all of our meetings are. So just keep that in mind. And of course, we don't care if you have your cameras on or off. Um, in this meeting, we talk about things that are common <laughs> across uh, chaos, uh, things mostly around operations in chaos. We also do some metric development here, um, as well as as other topics. So I'm going to share my screen and we will get right to it. If you have not answered the question, whoever put that in here was really, really good question. Yeah, it is pretty hard, isn't it, Jen? <laughs> it's too hard. I don't know. Um, and we'll just go through these uh, items as if, if anybody has anything they want to add, feel free to do so. Otherwise, we'll just knock them out one at a time. Yeah, and just a, just a note. Oh, I'm sorry, was someone else trying to talk? Nope. Okay. Uh, just a note uh, for the common working group uh, meeting or it's trying to kind of move the agenda so that it includes the uh, the updates from the the liaisons, but I I still want to have the ability to uh, to add kind of open agenda items. So that's why I've kind of added them towards the top. So I'm I'm thinking about this as kind of a template moving forward for our meetings. Sounds good. So if you have an open agenda item, please put it in, but don't feel obligated to if you don't. Uh, Okay, I'm going to guess this is Don, because I've seen this in other meetings. So, uh, Don, anything to add besides just a reminder to the survey? No, if I put this in all of the meetings, it, it is just a reminder to, um, to complete the survey. It is super short. It's not hard, um, but we really want as many people as possible who've used chaos tools, even, even in the past. Um, to, to fill it out and just give us give us your feedback and let us know what what challenges in particular you've had with with using the the tools and metrics because that would be super helpful for us moving forward. Don, I know you mentioned in other meetings that you were going to run this likely until September twelfth, depending on how many uh, results you get. Is that still kind of on your mind? Yes, thank you. That's a good point. Uh, I. My plan is when I get back from vacation on September 12th, I will look at the results, see if we have enough um, to, to analyze. Uh, if, we, if we still need some more responses, then I'll leave it open another, another week or two. This is, this is hard timing, right? Like everybody's on, everybody's on holiday and people are busy getting their kids back to school and there's just a lot of stuff going on for people. So it wouldn't surprise me if we need to leave it open a little bit longer than we might normally do for a survey. I was wondering too if this is something you would want to um, just leave open in general, uh, just as a feedback mechanism. We could even link it on the website somewhere. I'm just like, hey, if you have feedback for us, here's where you can send that. Just as like an open, you know, ongoing thing for folks who come and go. And I don't know what you think about that. That's or maybe maybe it would look a little different. I don't know, but. Yeah, I haven't really thought about that. I think it would be really good to collect some ongoing feedback from people, but we'd probably do it as something separate. It might have some of the same some of the same questions and kind of a similar feel. Yeah, that's a really it's a really good idea. Let me think more about that. Yeah, because I know, especially you know, at conferences or if you're talking to people and they they give you feedback or they say, you know, hey, I'm just starting. It's like, well, here's a here's a way you can give us feedback as you go through the process. Tell us what your pain points mm -hmm. are. Or whatever you want. So yeah, just something about. Cool. Yeah, thanks. It's a good idea. Okay, so we will hop past <laughs> hop past these open ones. Um, but if people do have things they want to add, knock yourself out. That's why we're here. Um, we'll jump down to the context uh, group liaisons. If there are any updates from these folks. I see um, under scientific. So well, first, let me just stop here at OSPO. I'm going to need a reminder of who these liaisons are because I don't remember. I, I don't I, I've been liaising officially unofficially for scientific university. So I put some notes in to 
discuss for each of those. And I think it's some other folks for ASPO. And since these agenda items are new to the ASPO, people probably didn't look 10 minutes before the meeting like I did and put stuff in. Okay, fair enough. Um, do you want to talk about this contributor experience, Sean? Yeah, so in the, um, I think this is, of course, not unimportant to much of the, the chaos community. Um, the particular way it's constructed in the scientific open source universe is that there's there's a couple of characteristics of that world that are that are different. One is there's a general reluctance among scientists that build small scale open source software to join together under some kind of foundation. Obviously, things like NumPy and the like are under the NumPoc under the NumFocus organization. So there's there's kind of a split identity, but un Unlike, I would I would say, in the corporatized open source space and scientific open source, there is there's a real in, um, understanding of a need to create a positive contributor experience in order to retrain retain small small numbers of contributors who are in most cases not paid or are on what's called soft money, or you know they, so they don't have any guarantee of continuing to be paid for the work. And so this contributor experience metric model, which seems similar to some of the other metric models that we've developed, candidly, uh, this is kind of how the stories around it have be started to develop inside the, the open source scientific software community. And, and I don't know in the context of common as it's currently constructed, how much detail um, we want to go into. I, I think my understanding is that, that one of the things that we're going to do in these groups is flesh out uh, metrics models that are conceived by the working groups that we are liaisoning, liaising with. Am I, am I remembering that role correctly? Uh, yeah, I think, uh, I don't know that we've discussed it in a lot of detail. But uh, I think uh, the general response to that question would be yes. That is that is that would be our job to uh, to kind of look at look at these metrics models and figure out if new metrics need to be created for them. One uh, and two, I think there's kind of a second step where where we ourselves kind of liaison with the metrics models working group to help right. this metric or to help this model get. Uh, get uh uh get created uh, mod and I, and, mod right yes and, and i think in in that sense i think we can we can uh we could edit this and add our input to it and i think we also want to be kind of a almost a reviewing agency to to kind of help them get it uh get it released right to so, provide feedback yeah. on the release yeah, I mean, it's okay. With with that then in mind, what I might propose is if folks could maybe take a minute to read through it, comment on it, and then I could take an action item to flesh it out more fully based on that feedback um, and bring it to the next metrics. So, so would this go? Does this really? Does this? Does this belong in common because it's a metrics model or? I think it's useful to talk about what the other, this is kind of what the scientific open source working group is focused on right now. So I, I bring and share it. And if if we want to take a few minutes to review it, I say let's and give feedback. I think that would be helpful if it should be pivoted to metrics model working group. I'm cool with that as well. So I, I think it, some, I see this uh, part right here, the second contributions. I see that part is the Part that's applicable to common that's just my personal feeling like that's that would be developed here but i yes. think that would go maybe in the metrics model working group that's just okay. my so so we need to okay so with that in mind then i think uh maybe the update is that um there needs to be an action item to develop a second contributions metric and i'm i'm happy to take that action item because bogger already produces that metric so it should be pretty easy to describe it. 
Uh, so I, I do think it's appropriate to look at the model itself as well. So uh, the the next step when we're done, though, that is, I think that's when we, I think that's when we move it to the metrics model working group, right? So maybe we we uh, have someone from this group then present it to the metrics model working group uh, after we've had maybe a pass at it. I'll say that by um, before the next, but I'll just work to develop this in the next week. Um, I put it up next to the second contributions metric. So I will, I, I will draft that metric. Did we start that before? I feel like that has been a I, conversation. I know it's been a conversation. Do I recall if we started it? I do not. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Because I don't. Follow um, I will. Second contributions is on the agenda uh, for this um, meeting, I believe. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, then let's let's. Uh, are we done with uh, scientific open sources update? Well, did did you want to take a moment and have everyone take a pass yeah. through it? Sure. That would be, you know, any comments are helpful. I think if, uh, you know, especially with regards to questions of coherence, clarity, um, is there too, you know, any any kind of feedback that would help the model itself become more easily consumed or used, I think would be helpful. So for folks who are new to this meeting um, or to any of our working group meetings, we do this sometimes where we will, we'll leave the recording going, but it is, it'll just be us all kind of typing in this doc here together, collaborating on this doc. So um, if you are wanting to add uh, changes, we, we usually use suggesting, and then we go through all of the suggested changes at the end and see which ones we wanna keep. So just for anybody who's new, who hasn't kind of gone through this exercise before, that's what we do. I, I know the link isn't there, but I just paste the chart for you to add as well. Are people feeling like this might be a uh, Gary? What did you call it? A mega mega model or something like your viability, and then you have like the four models that go in it. 
I mean, it feels yeah. like this is kind of leaning that way. We just, there's a lot here. What do you, I, what do you I, think? I actually think supermodel is, is funnier. And so oh, I've stuck with supermodel. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I, I'm sticking with, <laughs> I, I vote for supermodel as well. Yeah, my, my comment was similar to that. There's a, there's a lot of metrics in here. Uh, so maybe, so maybe it is a, a collection of, of other models that we're, we're looking at. Model squared. Um, I, I want to note that the, I, I noticed this as I'm writing a blog post to break down the supermodel that um, some of these metrics are likely already in buckets and categories. So it's worth considering whether or not it makes sense to try to bucket these uh, in the chaos categories that they come in, or if they, uh, I'll put this in a comment, but I'll also say it, that um, you could just take from the chaos categories to break it into submodels, uh, or you could categorize it based on what you think is appropriate something to think about. I wish I had thought about it before I just started doing my thing. And yeah, we have a lot of metrics around documentation and I feel like this is a, a model right here. It's just document, effective documentation is a model. That's my plus, plus one to that. question a model would need to answer and I just made a comment that in fact is really can the new contributor function with the documentation which is uh Gary's point about these buckets it's uh I don't know if that collection of metrics could be presented as a, a single bucket because it really is just about I'm new can I can I is there enough documentation that I can figure out that I can get started or not <laughs> I'm curious who's who's been driving this metric is that you sean or is it somebody else uh it emerged in the discussion i honestly i know i did not start it i've been in i've been in many discussions about it so um i it's, I was it's just, one I was, that's evolved so, in the course of the uh the science community meeting uh it's so here's here's why here's why i asked the reason I ask is because um, Kubernetes has had a contributor experience special interest group for a really, really long time. And yeah. I'm curious if the people working on this metric have looked at that group to see what we can learn from it. I love to comment about that at the top. I I, I, I can't say for certain, but okay. I would say oh, I am almost certain no, um, because these people are coming from an entirely different world than the Kubernetes maintainer and contributor community. So. Um, hmm. I, I doubt that they have that experience. And I think if, uh, yeah, if you left a note somewhere with maybe a link, I, I assume somewhere in there, there's a link to the materials. I can, or, I can grab a link to it. Yeah, or I could Google it. I know how to do That's that. Right. We can also um, add them as a reference to you at the bottom, John. I think would be helpful probably. So for, for most of these these metrics that are in here, we're kind of we're making the assumption that, for example, if documentation is good or bad, uh, that has that in, that informs contributor experience. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I mean, my, I, mean yeah. I my own experience with open source is if I can get a project running, the documentation is sufficient for me to make a contribution. If you haven't told me enough to get it running, then right. <laughs> you know you're you're not going to get new contributors and perhaps you're not going to get people to use it either so for those first metrics those are all metrics about that kind of take that kind of make a value judgment about contributor experience and then that last metric the the second contributions is is different right it's it's more of yeah. a it's more of a measure of yeah i just yeah i described um Actually, in the meeting, I can remember it remind me that in this in the last discussion of this, I suggested that some of these metrics are um, uh, 
at, they come before the retention or the, the good contributor experience and others are indicators of so the antecedents that's the that's what i was looking for it's like good mentorship good label inclusivity those are antecedents that you know i would say pull request and issue responsiveness are really critical actually um and that but second con second contributions that's a met that really is an outcome measure and i think it may be the only outcome measure on this entire list like this you know having a second contribution is a way of knowing that you're providing some degree of satisfactory new contributor experience because you aren't getting a ton of one and dones is it is it possible that this metric could look at the relationship between those outcomes and the and the documentation uh documentation for example is or would it be the relationship or looking at them kind of or are all of these metrics just being uh examined independently um maybe maybe um uh, you know that it inspires a thought given that there are so many metrics here that perhaps a metric model that talks about and we may have one already i have to go look creating uh a positive new contributor experience you know the onboarding kinds of things and then measuring would be a such a separate metric model perhaps uh, because there are there are outcome measures i can think of other than second contributions that yeah. sounds that sounds good to me maybe maybe separating yeah. them out it's gonna add a kind of red effect i think we spent a lot of time on this so far and i don't want to dominate this whole meeting with it so well, I, I second the I second the thought of uh, moving on then. <clears throat> Did we want to add an action item to this one for the next meeting? I think the second contributions metric is the action item that I took for the next meeting. I, I don't think I could just keep this group updated in general about the progress of this model. But uh, I think it was Elizabeth's point. We we the the metric is probably more the subject for this meeting. I'm certainly happy to give an up. I'm happy to give an update, but I and I'm, I'm grateful for. The, I think the, the scientific open source group would be grateful for the feedback. But we don't. I don't know that we need to spend this much time on this metric model again. Okay, so should we, we do have other stuff on our agenda. Should we go ahead and move yeah, along? Move it, please. Yeah, I okay. think so. Okay, awesome. Do you want to talk about this then, Sean? Yeah, I just, this is, I think, a brief update that uh, in the academic or university open source, again, you, you do have, um, uh, there are a lot of different conceptualizations of what uh, an open source program office is at a university and what it does. And and I would say it breaks down along maybe two main lines. One is it's the open source program office is viewed as a way of corralling intellectual property and assets that are developed by the university and promoting them. And, and the second is uh, thinking more about how open source software is consumed in the course of the conduct of science, uh, leading to funding of, of other, other projects. And there's always a question uh, at the university about whatever investment is or is not being made, it, is there a return on it? And so I think there's there's a need in this community, community if I would, uh, in this uh, uh, this working group, uh, if I would characterize it, it's, it's to help tell the story of uh, the value of open source in science. The scientists themselves know it. It's part of their day-to-day -day work and existence and they can't live without it and they sometimes need to create it and they have limited knowledge about how to maintain it as a sustained asset or build community around open source and and so there's there are there uh different perspectives and that's that's really what this group is wrestling with are all of the very different competing perspectives that are common in a university context 
I think that's that would be this that's the summary. And if there's others who are part of that group that have comments, I welcome. I don't really have comments, but I, I did just want to say that um, Ega, I hope I'm saying that right, and I had volunteered as the university liaisons. Um, so <laughs> hopefully so, we'll. Sorry. <laughs> No, Sorry no, 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 no. I'm not on. complaining. I'm not complaining. Like, it did not even occur to me to come into here and like do anything. And it also felt like that group was like still kind of feeling its way along. So I wasn't sure we were even at like a. Yeah. And so it's not, I, I'm only saying that just so uh, you know. And I, I'm still new to the project. So I'm a bit on the timid side. I don't know how long you've been participating, but so hopefully we'll, we'll get our, ourselves into well, the world. And and thanks thanks for noting that Jen because I I just happen to be very familiar with the community and I couldn't remember what I'd agreed to liaise with I was pretty sure science I couldn't remember about university and so I filled in some items on the agenda that I had been part of those conversations um, it's, and it's, I'm, I didn't I'm really I didn't yeah so thank you I well I didn't know before this meeting that this was the thing to do so. I do think maybe though we need to figure out how to make the liaison updates a little bit shorter because I feel like we've spent a lot of time just kind of um I feel like we've spent a lot of time just talking about what's happened in those in those groups as opposed to focusing on how the common group can help those those other groups because we can a, a lot of us attend both of those or we can read the summaries so I think we need to think about ways we can make these more efficient over time too. Yeah, maybe boxing. That's, I'm partly, I'm certainly to blame for the part of that. I, I tend to chat a lot, so sorry. No, no worries. So I'm just thinking we can't, we can't do this every every meeting because we'll we won't get anything else done. Yeah, maybe if there's just like an action item, like this one had a metric. So if there is a metric university wants us to create, then we'll do that. <laughs> you want um, to do a, maybe a five minute limit? There we go. Um, okay, so let's thank you, Sean, for that quick update, and we will go ahead and move on. Um, okay. the system. I don't know if we have anybody here who attends those meetings. I don't think we do. So, yeah, I, actually, they are off for the summer. Now that I say that, they're off. They'll come back in September. Um, KB restructuring update. Do you want to? Uh, the nod's not here, so I would, uh, I would say no on that one. Oops. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, self merge rate. Um, I think Matt was going to clean it up and bring it back to the group, but we have Ray here, who is kind of um, the one who brought this up. Do we want to look at this? Really? Yeah, I, I was. Yeah, sorry, I haven't been in this meeting for a few months, but I've been following the progress on the Google Doc. I think one remaining question is: Should we have two separate metrics for? Thing, uh, PRs that are merged by the original contributor and the PRs that are merged by the original author without reviews. Um, I mean, I'm more interested in the PRs that are self-merged without reviews. Like, I mean, I, for projects that are small, it's understandable, like a lot of PRs could be merged by the author, but as long as there are reviews that are done by other people, then I'm mostly okay with that. But uh, I'm okay either way, just having one metrics, just focusing on ones without reviews or just having, I think somebody made a comment about those are distinct and in, interesting enough so that, I mean, it says anonymous, I don't know who left that comment, but I'm okay either way. So that seems like the only one that's sort of outstanding as far as I can tell, but. Yeah, I think that, I think that was what we were waiting on. Mm -hmm. But people have a consensus or like, I don't want to sort of dictate it should be one or two, but. I guess I'm not quite, it's not quite clear to me what the distinction is. Well, so the PRs that are merged by the original author with reviews or without any reviews. Um, so the comment I was making I was see. that if, if it's, even if it's merged by the same author, as long as there are decent amount of reviews out that were done by other people that I think I'm 
okay with that, especially for smaller projects and smaller companies. But if it's a self merge, you know, five minutes after submitting the PR, that's a little bit more problematic. So, so really, my take on this, I think. Oh, go ahead, Elizabeth. No, no, no. I was just gonna say it really comes down to this right here and or right like that's what we're trying to decide if it's an and or if it's an and or. Yeah, I think um, I, I think these are two slightly different things. I think that we should focus on whichever one Ray you originally intended and the one that you find most mm -hmm. interesting and then put the other one as a filter on that one. Because okay. I think that that we could go sense. either, we could go either way. And I think one can be a filter on on the other, depending on on what's most interesting. And I, I do agree, Ray. I think the the one the the case where they merge it without anyone else looking at it is the most problematic one. Um and, but you could also, you know, you could also have a filter that that shows um, you know, the the other case, which is they self-merged it, but there there were reviews. Cool. I mean that that certainly works for me. So I guess the answer to your question, Elizabeth, it would be an and, uh, but we can add or as a sort of a filter, an option. But there we go. Boom. Done. <laughs> cool. Um, I'll just put a little comment in here. We decided to make the four part a filter and that yeah, way thanks for people yeah no I, I was just gonna say thanks for people's feedback while i was sort of gone both you know really on vacation and to i don't know why i miss other meetings but appreciate everyone's input So this one looks really, really good now. Um, I think Matt was gonna still go through and accept all the changes and um, we'll do one, maybe one final look next week, or I don't even know if we need that. Um, what do you all think? Do you wanna look at it one more time or do you think it's good to go? If Matt has the action item to clean it up, then I would just... Uh, uh, okay. I think that that suggestion of making okay. the other filters perfect and after that I think it's ready. And I think Matt took the action item to clean it up only because Ray wasn't available. I think I think at this point Ray should take the action item to clean it up since it's his metric and he should you know get credit for it by doing the doing the PR. Um I sort of feel like we've talked we've talked this one to death. I think we should PR it and um and if there's if there's any more questions we can we can think about it then. Okay, so the next action item for me really is to like submit a PR, it sounds like, right? I think I'll accept all the changes on the doc and I might ask stupid questions on Slack on where to create a PR and all that, but we can do that offline. <laughs> sounds good. Yeah, sounds good. Oh, uh, make sure you add for the people on this call. Uh, make sure you add your your name to the uh, the known contributors at the bottom of this document. If you feel you, like you have uh, contributed yep. to the uh, the document in any way. Or to the discussion. So we've been we've been dragging along some of these other agenda items uh, as we go through. We, we haven't had time to make it through all of them. So if we need to drag them along to the next meeting, uh, I suppose that's okay. Is this uh, sorry? Was this a is that a, it is a pull request? Um,
Yeah, I think I I think I fundamentally disagreed with uh, this pull request. My, I, I guess I, maybe I should take another look at it, but I I do think that it should be closed without without merge because he basically it it was a completely different take on the metric that wasn't actually how we'd how we'd implement it. And I don't think he ever added more information to it. It was almost a it was almost a different metric, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, he was talking about something completely different than than what we had proposed and what we had implemented in Compass, um, which is fine if he wants to submit that as a separate metric, but I don't think it's a pull request on this one because it fundamentally redefined the metric. Okay. Is there any value in adding adding that as a potential new metric or or would we be better off just waiting to see if it comes up again? I'm kind of, I'm kind of of the opinion that if they're important, they'll, they'll come up again. I think we close it with the comment that we this would redefine a metric that that is being used and people find value. And if you want to suggest this work as a separate new metric, then we, we would recommend that you do that or some way to keep it positive. If we see value in the proposed new metric, um, but I I certainly just reading through it just now doesn't certainly doesn't look like what that metric is anyway. So it does it shouldn't be merged. It should be closed without merging. I agree with that. It's just whether we want to be encouraging in the close note or not. Do we do we feel that maybe there was some confusion in the uh, in the existing metric that uh, led this individual to uh, propose this? Do we need to edit for clarity or? Yeah, I don't know. Um, a lot of people have been confused by this metric. Um, I'll be honest, I, I've already tried to edit it so that it um, was more clear to people, but I think it's, I think it's a metric that's a little bit um, difficult for people to understand. Um, and I'm I'm not sure that we can fix that in the description. With that said, if anybody has ideas for how we can fix that in the description, um, I'm all for that. So what I've written here does that seem fair to everybody? Did I did I get that right? Before I close this, I think that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, it's uh it's a uh, basically the put simply it's is your backlog growing? I don't have any trouble understanding the first paragraph of this metric. Yeah. A lot of people like to look at change requests, uh, just look at the new stuff. So the new stuff that came in over over the past month, um, and how many of those have they have they closed? Um, which isn't which does not address the backlog. It's a kind of a, how are we keeping up with the stuff coming in right this minute? Um, and I fundamentally see that as something completely different. Uh, yeah, because it doesn't yeah, address the backlog. And, and mine does, uh, the change request closure ratio is, is all about the backlog. Awesome. Done, boom, check that off. And here we see second contribution coming back again. So that we already took care of. And then this, um, we have four minutes. We can look at it real quick. Let's see what this is. This is a metric that we did. Does anybody know who started this? I do not. I'm wondering what that, where that issue is located. Uh, is it located? Oh, maybe this is, is this maybe the one that Luis was talking about? From that, because that looks like it came from him and Banat. No, this is actually something different. Um, okay. I think this came out of they the Baturgia folks do some blog posts around some of their metrics. 
and some of their metrics. Um, they put in a whole bunch of detail in this blog post about, in particular, this one, the backlog management index, but it's not actually a defined chaos metric. So I think we asked them to, if they could come back and propose it as a, as a metric. So Luis wrote that blog post, and I'm, I'm going to guess that Vinod started to turn that into a, um, turn Luis's blog post into a metric definition. If I had to guess what happened, I'm not, I don't that, remember. That, that yeah, I think, you, I think that, you're right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there we go. And I, yeah, and I just okay. dropped the, uh, oh, I dropped the issue into the chat. Thank you. That's perfect. So this does seem like a sort of an accident in this group could take to work on developing this metric into a chaos yeah. metric. I didn't realize this wasn't part of chaos, but as a former Biturja user, I remember looking at BMIs and quarterly reports that I got from them. So I am going to add uh, Vinod to the AI on that just because he he created the document, it looks like. Uh, so next time he is next time he shows up, we can uh, discuss it with him as the point of contact. Is that fair or shall we yeah or shall I move it forward without fair. him? Yeah. Just remember he lives in Florida, so September he may be on the internet so he needs to go through. Yeah, that's fair. We can also ping him on Slack too and just see if he wants it or if somebody else wants to take it. Not a big deal. Oh. Oh, I'm going to add that link here too. Oh, perfect. Hey, look at that. We got through everything. Good job, everyone. Hey, us. Just time for us to stop. So, yeah. With one minute to spare. Well done. Boom. <laughs> Y'all take the rest of the day off. To you all. That was, that was some impressive moderating. <laughs> yeah. See you everybody later. Have a good Bye. one. Hi, everybody. Bye.